How have you been finding this lockdown period, though, obviously with the podcast, with the rest of your time? I mean, have you found that this is a, a good time to take stock and to, to be creative or to rest? Never have any problems resting. Being creative is interesting, actually. I was a lot more creative before this hit. Um, mm. I, I used to be a joint first study composer and I'd sort of started composing again since this hit. And I don't think this has got anything to do with the podcast, which I'll come back to in a minute. Mm. I've done nothing creatively at all. I usually have a pile of scores on my desk that need marking up or I'm learning or there are projects ahead of me. Once they started disappearing one by one by one, and the scores were being put back on the shelf, I just stopped looking at scores. And I know I'm not the only conductor who's been like this. And so uh, even not even really listening to that much music. Um, you know, if I get in the car at all, you know, there's music on in the car. But other than that, I'm not really doing anything like I would normally do. You know, my day-to-day -day routine is so dominated by music, either studying it or listening to it or learning it or conducting it or listening to it or whatever. It's, it has almost felt like a holiday from it completely. But I think the bigger thing is that so much of what we do when we're studying and learning is deadline led. Mm. Um, that with no deadlines in the diary, I mean, I, I have dates in the diary. I have dates from September onwards. But as we sit here right now on June the 12th, I have no idea whether I'm going to be doing those dates. Um, mm. So it's so deadline led that uh, I just, <laughs> I've just sort of paused and stopped almost in shock as if to say, well, you know, do I need to learn that 40 minute symphony I've never conducted before for a, for a concert I may or may not do. Exactly. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's tough. And uh, going back to the podcast, once I got the idea to start it, then pretty much every waking minute of daylight, daytime work hours is spent on it. It was spent building the web page in the first place, designing logos, working out how to use GarageBand, lining up people to, be, to interview, and now it's up and running. It's, I'm either interviewing or editing or publishing, and, and it's non-stop. I've just finished editing this morning, episode 25. I've got five more to edit, and I've got five in the diary, which takes me to episode 35, which is wow. past Christmas, I think. <gasps> you know, so, it, 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 yeah, it, it, it just takes a lot of time to do it. And I'm loving it. You know, it's not what I'm trained to do, but, you know, I'm loving it as a, as a very nice mental diversion. Yeah, no, I can I can totally relate to that. I honestly didn't envisage doing a podcast, say, two years ago. I don't know whether you can relate to this, but if I'm not, you know, making the podcast or editing, I love listening to other podcasts as well, so... Well, it, interesting. Up until this point, I, I'm not sure I've listened to another podcast all the way through ever before. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um... Then by starting it, obviously, then you, you know, I listened to some of the highest ranking podcasts in the world to see what they did. Uh, listen to other classical music podcasts, see what they did, and then and since then, others have appeared. One in particular that's run, that's run by a, a very old friend of mine. And so, yeah, I'm now I am listening. I now have a set list of podcasts I listen to, and my phone bings when a new episode comes out. Yeah. And yeah, it's a new thing. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any favourite? podcasts at the moment that you're enjoying listening to oh i don't know whether i've got any favorites um i sort of dip in and out of them or ones um, that you've been listening to at the moment what have you been listening to recently well the one that my my old friend tommy pearson is, is doing which is called the classical top five oh, um, okay. which is a, a basically a discussion show uh, and each week there's a, a top five so the, the last one was top five british symphonies with Sir Mark Elder on, which you know, oh, I had an wow. interest in because I'd not long interviewed Mark Elder myself for my podcast. So, um, Amazing. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, so the, yeah, it's, it's a different t topic each week. The Basically, it's an excuse to talk through your your loves and passions and favourites um, of whatever the subject is. One week it was pianist, one week it was cellist, uh, with a different guest every week. Um, so, yeah, I listened to that. Uh, you know, partly out of loyalty, partly out of the fact that, um, you know, the guests are very interesting. I know, I know two of the three regular panellists very well and I'm always interested in what the guest says. I think, you know, the, the frustrating thing as a, somebody who's doing a classical music podcast is it costs money 
uh, and energy and time to get a license to play any of the music that you're talking about, which mm. to the listener must be so frustrating. You know, when I came up with the idea of my podcast, I want I wanted a particular piece of music to be the opening and then to drip it in bits and bobs through them and then finish with the end of the piece at the end of the podcast. I discovered I needed a license for this. I needed to speak to the publisher of the, of the composer. I needed to speak to the people who'd released the record. That's a frustration, which is why I ended up doing what I did and asking a very good mate of mine whether he wouldn't mind writing me some music, which he did, which is absolutely brilliant. If, and I, he knows this, so you won't mind me saying it, if at this point, really annoying, <laughs> because with every episode, and I've now, as I said, published or edited 25 of them, I have to cut and paste the bits of that piece together every <laughs> time for each podcast. <laughs> it, and it's, it was catchy when I listened to it the first time in March. Now it's driving me insane. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I might need him to get, um, get to write another one so that, you know, if I, if I get to 50 episodes and beyond, then I change the music or something. <laughs> yeah. Would you be able to tell, for the sake of the listeners, a bit about your podcast then, A Mic on the Podium, the premise of the podcast, how this came about, perhaps what you're aiming to do with the podcast, your target audiences? Well, before this COVID uh, lockdown quarantine started and the subsequent loss of work from all classical musicians in the UK and beyond, I was thinking about doing a podcast anyway. I'm chatting yeah, with my agent, before, Sarah. Yeah, chatting to Sarah Bruce about this, my agent and manager. And the podcast subject I was thinking of was completely different, actually. And I may one day do it. But then I got thinking and thinking hard. And I thought, well, I'm sitting here doing nothing. Hang on a minute. All conductors are sitting here doing nothing. And when in the history of the world have all of the conductors in the world sat there doing nothing? Mm -hmm. So I thought, right, okay. I, so I looked at my phone and thought, well, there's, there's 10 people at least I can ring up or email or text and ask, would they come on? Then I thought, right, what's the format? What's the point? How do I want to play this? And actually, the credit goes to a TV show. I don't know whether you've ever seen it. It's called Inside the Actor's Studio. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, the premise of that show is that they basically go through from the beginning of their life through all of their works, yeah. be it TV or film or stage, get to the end, then there's normally a commercial break. And then after the break, they have to answer a set of questions. I can't remember it's 10 or 20. And then it, the questions are thrown open to the audience. Well, of course, being a podcast, I couldn't do throwing open the questions. So originally, so I thought, well, what a great thing to do. Ask them how they started in music you know did you learn the piano did you sing did you go through their career and as it as it happened very quickly on I realized hey hang on this is great because everybody's journey is different everybody there are about three or four people who went through the British choral tradition and were a chorister at a cathedral but then from then their career changes in different ways so everybody's career is different so I knew that was going to be an interesting interesting to everybody and there was always be something that I could talk about that would be different from person to person, whether it be the amount of travel that they do because of the jobs they had, or whether, you know, what was it like to work in Norway and the United States at the same time? Why do you conduct left-handed? So I knew that there would be enough body, that, but I wanted to, to do the 10 questions at the end. And at one stage, it was going to be 20, and I'm really glad it isn't, <laughs> because the, the podcast will be far too long. I was going to do the original ones from the actor Studio and 10 about conducting. What I've ended up doing is doing five and five. So five are specifically about conducting and five are just trying to find out what sort of human being you are. And, and I think what's happened is that over the course of it, every conductor has been really honest. One of them said it was like going to a therapy session to sort of mm, get mm. things off their chest. They've just, they've realized, well, I was speaking to somebody and said, you know, they were telling me how, it, how much they enjoyed listening to other episodes and how much they enjoyed it. And I said, well, can you put your finger on why? And I said, well, actually, yeah, because it's two conductors talking to each other. So what I wanted it to be is something that would interest the casual classical music lover who's always wanted, wondered what conductors do and how they think, what makes them tick, right through to the conducting geek or the conducting student who wants to know, well, how did they get there? How do they mark their scores up? How do they learn their scores? 